All right, this is gonna be a hard video for me to make, but just bear with me. The likely title of this video is something like, Dear Konami, this is why your game can't get and retain new players to either Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG, OCG, or Master Duel. Now, if you watched my videos before, you know that I like to really try my best to really approach every match and how can I possibly play around this board, win this game, etc. I don't like to give up unnecessarily. And, you know, that being said, there's going to be games that you absolutely can't win. And that's totally fine. That's, you know, that's game balance. That's how things go. Your opponent should have ways that they just get all the pieces that they need. And, and you just you just don't have the right hand to play through their board or whatever. And that's totally fine. Even in this match, I'm not even salty at it. Like you win, you lose. It's how it goes. But my opening hand here as a Labyrinth player in the Dark versus Light event is actually insanely good. I've got a monster out in the Raiden. I can just tribute over whatever power monster they put out. I've got a Feather Duster for back row. I've got an evenly matched. So I even have like ways to bait out interruption and then evenly um, I've got my engine and I even have my own power spell in the Eradicator here. Um, so my hand is actually really good. Plus I'm gonna draw for turn, right? The issue is this turn for the opponent, I think took something like seven to eight minutes. And I'm sitting here knowing already that I'm going to lose the match because the opponent has every single extender that they need to set up the most powerful um, Drytron board. Even though I have all of these ways to go second and break boards, the game, you know, whether you believe in an algorithm or not, in the game, you know, saying that, yeah, you know, we're going to give you some pieces to go second because we know you lost the coin toss, you know, because if I go first, I bet you I'm not getting a hand like this, right? The game just, you know, knows that you don't need stuff like this to go to go first with necessarily. Um, and again, that's just speculation. I don't know if that's actually real, but I do anticipate that there is an algorithm. But anyways, back to the main point. So. The opponent is going through this Drytron setup, and I know that they're going to get multiple Herald, like Green Light and uh, Orange Light. So this is the Monster Negate here, Orange Light that just popped up. They're going to have Diviners in hand for extra Fairies. They're going to get you know, maybe some other Fairies in hand as well. And they have the Omni Negate Herald of Perfection as well. That is, you know, just as many Fairies as you have in hand. Discard and negate um, Spell Trapper Monster effects, right? So very, very strong opening hand. And again, the Raiden can break through the Perfection, and you know the Duster can clean up back row and the evenly match can break the board. But the problem is now they put on this dragster, which is another spell and trap negate. So we can, you know, like even if I out the, the perfection, which they'll, they'll resummon another one here, um, the evenly match will get negated. Okay, so that's totally fine. As a new player, and as somebody who played this game from 2002 to 2007, um, and then came back to the game, I understand how the game has evolved, obviously. But if I'm a new player coming in and I'm like, okay, I think I understand the basic mechanics. Uh, I've either invested money or my time to build a new deck. And, you know, every match should be approachable and, and, you know, at least some back and forth. They go, I go, or I play during their turn, they play during my turn, a lot of interaction. And that's just how it goes. But when you run into stuff like this, this is an easy way to really discourage people from playing the game. You run into these people who have, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten minute combo boards. And as an, op as an opponent sitting on the other side, I'm wasting my time sitting here. Because, again, as, as somebody who's been playing the game and, and, and know it a little bit, I know that I'm not going to be able to break this board. Um, you might say, well, Quantum, if you're playing hand traps, maybe you would be able to break the board. Yeah, but if they have every extender anyways, they're still playing through everything and they're still setting up pretty much the exact same end board because at the end, they're, you know, if I don't have board breakers and I have hand traps, they're, they're, still, they're, they're gonna end up with a Herald of Perfection regardless and they're gonna negate whatever I try to do if I try to play through engine. Um, so whether it's board breaks or hand traps, they're able to push through. Um, and you know, maybe they did have a god hand, maybe this is a one-off, but I really don't think this is the case because I see this happening more and more. And obviously this game does have a problem with new players leaving the game. All right, DK's talked about it, a lot of Yugi tubers have talked about it in TCG, um, and talked about like the shareholders meeting from the OCG. And this is not healthy for the game. Nobody wants to sit there for 10 minutes, waste their time, just to find out that I just can't even play the game. So I stay in this match just to prove this point. Again, I'm not salty, I know that this happens. I could have left the game as soon as I saw Drystron hit the field, and that's usually what I do if I see them have the two or three extenders. I'm like, I'm not coming back from this anyways, so I might as well just resign. So I'm just showing you an example here. I'm going to attempt to play Raiden through the Perfection, so that takes care of the Omnigate. I'm going to summon the Ariana to bait out at Herald, even though I don't even need to do this, but I can't dust or anything to bait out the Dragster. So that means my only last play is evenly matched, right? And we know that they have, again, another Ava discard and extension. They've got a green light in hand still, diviners to dump. And, you know, my hand here is likely not playable. I'm going to try to evenly. They just have the free spell and trap negate, which again, they'll have during their turn, I believe, as well. Is this only during the opponent's turn or is this during once per your, oh no, once per turn. So they can do it again during their turn. So even if I set my welcome labyrinth and try to activate it to play, they just negate it again. And I personally think that negates in Yu-Gi-Oh 
really should not exist. And I know that's probably a controversial thing, but you should never have a board where somebody can't play or a board that puts up more than one negate, right? Whether that be a spell and trap negate, monster negate, whatever, right? Um, and so this is like, yeah, I can't play. So I just end up resigning. So what was the point of me sitting there for 10 minutes just to watch the opponent combo? You're wasting my time, Konami. Why do I want to play a game like this, right? Um, I'm going to show you another game though. Let's hop over to that one and I'll explain kind of the counterpoint. It's funny because on the, um, I guess as of right now, the the video that I have for my like intro video to the channel is um, as a streak of me going 17 and 0 in the Duelist Cup from like a long time ago. But in that video, what actually broke my win streak was the exact same kind of deck. I, th I actually think it was Drytron. It was like Herald of Perfection, Herald of Ultimateness or something, and just like a bunch of Omni Negates that I just couldn't play through. So. Again, going back to my point that like Omni Negates in this game are kind of stupid. Like why why do you have that? Why do you have mechanics in the game that literally prevent your opponent from playing? Anyways, in this matchup, um, and the point that I want to prove here is this is the Labyrinth Mirror match. And the opponent starts off really strong. And again, sometimes they just open really well and there's nothing wrong with that. That's going to happen. Sometimes they're going to open really strong hands and you're going to open really weak hands. So I start off, you know, fairly decent myself. Um, but again, the opponent is going to be able to start comboing here during the draw phase to start popping my cards and shutting me down to a certain extent and again this is what labyrinth does this is fine but notice how there's actually some back and forth here um even with eradicator which people say is the most like one of the most toxic cards and you know I, I i can agree i can understand this card probably should be banned um but again at least with a deck like this it was designed correctly that there's still back and forth and i'm gonna at least be able to attempt to play i'm probably not gonna win and I can resign if I want to, sure, but at least I didn't have to sit through a 10 minute combo just to find out I can't play the game, right? And as a new player, you don't know until maybe the end of the uh, of the turn that, you know, oh, the opponent put up like a billion Omni Negates, I can't, I can't play. Or, uh, you know, I mean, when it comes to interruptions, like decks like Branded or like Labyrinth that don't put up Negates but put up Interruptions, I think that these are the kind of decks you need in this game for it to survive. Um, and so you, again, you can see here, now we're on turn three, I was able to play a little bit, you know, yes, I was stopped, interrupted a certain amount, but I was able to at least continue to play and try to grind my way through this game, right? Um, now, again, the opponent does have an advantage, they did go first, I did get their lady set up, and I could have continued to try to play this out, but I knew that the game was over. I probably could have played maybe two more turns, I would have ended up losing anyways, but at least there was back and forth, and, and that's what I mean. I don't mind losing those games that I can at least interact with, right? And I'm sure many players who are new to the game would also appreciate that because, like I said, when you're playing through uh, a, a turn one on your opponent's side and they're just doing stuff for 10 minutes, you're not really learning anything about the game unless you're really trying to pay attention to what they're doing. Um, you might learn some new cards because you might read their cards and be like, oh crap, like this thing can literally just shut me down for like 10 times in a row if they, if they really wanted to. But who really wants to do that? At least this way I can play and actually interact, learn what interactions do. So I learned that, oh, if they activate their welcome, they're gonna trigger their field spell. But if I activate my welcome, I can trigger my field spell first to pop their field spell so that they don't end up resolving their field spell when they resolve their welcome, right? So that was why I chained my welcome to theirs. In the end, like I said, I knew I was gonna lose, so it didn't matter. But like understanding and playing through games and trying to think through the interactions is, is a healthy way to promote the game. And I just, I just don't think you get that with decks that put up all these Omni Negates and, and just prevent you from playing. And, and the reason I'm, I'm making this video now is because, um, well, actually, hold that thought. Maybe we'll transition to another video and I'll explain why. So the reason I'm making this video now is because according to DK and his suspicions, they're not leaks because they're not confirmed. So Konami don't hate on DK. He, he does more for this game than I think you guys realize. Um, he's the reason that people like myself and many others have even jumped back into this game and or stayed playing this game. Um, this man does incredible work. I'm sure I don't need to state that to the people watching this video. They, they all know. Regardless, according to DK and his suspicions, Pearly is the next deck coming to this game. And I'm a, not afraid, but like I'm worried that that will just be yet another very oppressive force in the game that will turn off new players. Because whenever you enter, like you just banned Rongo because it's a card that shuts down your special summons and um, is unaffected by card effects and you know, all of these broken things, especially when you tie it with something like Sales Band. You don't even need Sales Band, to be honest, because Rongo surviving for two turns with five materials is enough to make your opponent go, well, I can't play, so you just OTK me anyways, and why did I just sit there and waste my time? But you're bringing X Pearly Noir, which is essentially Rongo, like a baby Rongo, um, but in essence, it's easier to bring out, essentially, <laughs> because it's an unaffected 
towers that has massive attack when it has the materials. It's very hard to stop, especially with hand traps. When you're out there bored, they just get all their resources back essentially if you've seen how this deck works in TCG and OCG. Um, and then if you somehow do manage to play a card that can somehow out that card, um, very few cards can actually outright out it like Herald of the Abyss. Uh, but they might have outs to that even, because they might bring another monster to the field with the same type and attribute. Um, or if you put up something like Unexplored Winds, which can technically send that card, I believe, because the effect to send it for the Tribute Summon isn't an activated effect. So X Purely Noir is actually affected by it when it has five or more materials. But they would never let that card resolve because they just attach two materials and spin it back. So essentially it is like Rongo. It's like anything you try to play that would potentially threaten the X Purely Noir, they just out. If they end with that thing having seven materials that's three bounces and then yeah now it's affected by card effects but you've just lost three cards you have two you know two or three cards left in your hand and you have to try to play with and play through the opponent's board and they likely have hand traps or other other interruptions um that they can do to shut you down it's just like what am i supposed to do against a deck like that um so i i think that those kind of archetypes the decks that really don't let your opponent play um need to go in this game and i don't know what the solution is maybe it is just straight up reset rotation i think that's what it has to be because then that will allow konami to print cards because this is the other problem which ruxin and, and now a lot of other youtubers are making uh, videos about you're printing too many cards and you're trying to print too many power cards to sell your sets i did not want to buy any of the newest sets because i'm like there's only one or two power cards in there and like i'm not spending hundreds of dollars on boxes to maybe pull a hundred dollar secret rare or pull a one dollar secret rare you know what i mean it's like i'm just not gonna play the game so i haven't bought any tcg products after i spent probably like four grand uh since uh, since november of 2022 when i started to really get back into this game and i'm like yeah i'm gonna make this my new hobby because you know now i'm an adult i have some disposable income i have some free time which probably is going to be going away in a couple of weeks but um you know i was really amped to get back into the game that i really loved as a child um, or, you know, as a maybe a young teen, let's say, because grade 7 and 8 is when I played this game in 2002, uh, up to 2007. And, you know, I credit this game with actually teaching me a lot. Um, going to locals as, at a young age, I learned card values, and, you know, that helped me develop my love for business and economics, and that's what I ended up specializing in in school and stuff. So, you know, I, I developed a lot of skills, critical thinking too, huge, huge critical thinking skills, right, obviously. Um, you know, coming back to this game, being able to be successful is being able to critically think all, all through the different lines. And I think you still have a lot of those really important fundamental aspects in this game, but I just think the game has get, gotten to a state where you're not, you're not retaining players because it's too complex, it's too oppressive. Either you have all that historic knowledge or you don't. And if you don't have that historic knowledge as a new player, you're not going to sit there and try to learn it all because it's just too complicated, right? It's years and years of experience and just seeing how the cards are printed and, and just the broken nature of some cards, like Rongo was a good example and now X Perlin you are coming to the game I think is another, you're just not gonna retain new players. So again, not a rant video. I, this is a, more of like, I care for this game and I wanna see it succeed and this is where I think the state of the game is and why it's suffering to a certain extent. And honestly, yeah, some of the frustration that I have with this game because just the last point before I wrap it up is you should never have a game where if I go first or if you go first, you put up a board or I put up a board that you cannot play through. There should at least be four turns in every match, at least. Um, and so the fact that people scoop turn one, you know, the Drytron match, you know, I let them combo for like eight minutes or whatever, and then I literally couldn't play even though I tried. It's like, what's the point? I'm just wasting my time at that point, right? So anyways, let me know what you think in the comment section below if you've made it this far. Um, again, not a rant video, and I'm not salty about taking losses. Um, even though it might come across that way. I think everybody needs to experience losses to a certain degree. Mistakes, you know, especially from misplays is, is the best way to learn. Um, but at a certain point, you're just like, I'm not even making mistakes. I'm just losing to the fact that I didn't draw the one of card that I need that I'm, um, I'm only allowed to play three copies of. And even if I drew it, the opponent probably had a way to play around it anyways or something, right? So it's just, it feels like the game is in is in a tough spot right now. But yeah, that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. If you made it this far again, thank you again for watching. Quantum is out.